Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can actually bend rock. So we all know there's some things in this world that are flexible and they can bend like this elastic band here, can twist it however I want. And then there's some things in this world that are not flexible, like this rock here. Ugh. Can't bend it. In fact, not only does it not bend, but if you try to push on it too much, then it just breaks. For example, let's try to bend this rock. Ugh, it breaks. But there are actually rocks that you can bend. The bendiest rock is called itacolamite. So you can see in these videos just how flexible this stone is. Now this itacolamite is a naturally occurring flexible sandstone, but it's very rare. It's only found in a few parts of the world. So this is a sample from Leeds Museum in the UK. Now the reason this sandstone is so flexible is because of voids that are left in the interlocking quartz within it. And so even though the quartz by itself is not that flexible, these interlinking parts can kind of bend around each other and it causes the whole piece of sandstone to be able to bend to a significant degree. And this is a sample from a guy named Nigel Chivers allowed me to use this video. Pretty cool, a smaller piece here. So this is a uh, piece of it's a cumulite or Indian shaking stone and as you can see it moves and twists it really is just sandstone and I was just wondering how useful it would be inside of a dry stone wall because it would take up any any slack and fill up any gaps so that even even like this you could get one stone across three but does that mean that regular rock can bend as well? Well, it all depends. Let me show you what I mean. So when you push on something to bend it, there's two different things going on, whether you're at the top surface or the bottom surface. So at the top surface where you're pushing, everything is getting compressed together. But on the opposite surface, these particles are being pulled apart. So if you were to divide this piece into two, anything below this line would be under tension, meaning it's being pulled apart. And anything above this line is under compression, meaning that it's being pushed together. Now usually most materials can hold up better under compression than tension, especially brittle materials. So what that means is that most likely when you push on something, this is going to be the area that's going to break because it's being pulled apart. Now the amount that this outer edge is being pulled apart is very much dependent on the thickness of this piece. So the thicker the piece, the more these particles are being pulled apart. So the closer you get to the center area, the less tensile force there is. So that basically means that the thinner a piece is, the less tensile force there is. And the thicker it is, the more tensile force there is on the outer edge here. So if you have a really thick piece, even if you try to just push it down a little bit and bend it, basically this outer edge is gonna break under tension. So what that means is that if I were to have these two different pieces of rock, that means that this smaller piece would be able to deflect more than this bigger piece. So basically, I should be able to bend this one more than this one. But you can see, even with a piece this thin, when I push on it, it still breaks. <laughs> so I couldn't really see any deflection before this actually broke. Now this kind of happened all at once, but what actually happened is that the bottom is the place that probably started the crack more than the top. You can see the process of breaking under tension a little more with a piece of wood. So you can hear the bottom breaking. You can hear the strands in the bottom starting to break. So you can see at the top here, it was under compression. So these parts were being pushed together. And at the bottom, the opposite side that I was pushing on, everything was being pulled apart. So basically when you're bending it like this, these parts are being pulled apart from each other and these parts are being pushed together. So if I really wanted to bend rock, all that means is that I need a really thin slice of it. So the thinner the slice I can get, the more I can bend it. So let's try to get as thin a slice as possible of this stone here. Now in order to get really thin slices of rock, you can use rock like this sandstone here. 
So sandstone is a sedimentary rock as opposed to an igneous rock. Sedimentary rock means that it's made of tiny little pieces of other rock that were compressed and then cemented together under the pressure of the earth. But what can happen during this process is notice that there's these layers in here. So sometimes the, the cementing of the tiny little grains of igneous rock within it sometimes don't work very well. And so it can form these tiny little slits. It can form these layers that aren't cemented together very well. So you can see here how it looks like this could almost just come apart or slide apart if you knock it hard enough. And what can happen is the parts that aren't cemented very well together, they can actually start to get weathered within it. So water can start to get in it and can start to eat it away until eventually it can slide off in sheets. And so you can get these flakes that come off it if you get it in the right spot. It's hard to make the flakes by yourself, but if you find one that's been weathered, then you can kind of get the flakes just to peel off. So what I did is I found a very thin sheet of sandstone. So we're going to see if we can actually bend this sandstone. And the reason it should bend is because the tensile forces on the back of it aren't going to be very high compared to when it's a thick piece like this rock here. So let's see if we can actually bend this rock. All right, so I have my rock here. Let's set it up on the edge. Let's see how much it actually bends. I'm gonna try to do this without breaking it. Whoa. <laughs> so look at this bend. So we're actually bending rock here. So you can actually see how flexible and elastic the rock actually is. In fact, rocks along with all solids are actually elastic, meaning that when you push on them, they come back to their original position without deformation. Okay, let's see how far we can actually get this to bend. Oh, it broke. So you can see that still, when we push it too far, it finally does break. But you can see how flexible this actually is. Now this ability to bend, depending on size, applies to anything, even things that we normally don't think of as bendable, like rock or even glass. So for example, I have a glass rod here. So you can see that this glass rod is actually quite flexible. You can push on it and it bends and goes down you can push on it and it pretty easily flexes. So the glass itself is even elastic. Look how much I can actually push on it before it breaks. Then it finally breaks catastrophically. For example, I have a piece of glass here that's only 0.1 millimeters thick. So that means that I should be able to bend this a lot more than this glass rod. So look how much this glass bends. You can hear me flicking it. At this thickness, it almost feels like a piece of plastic or something. It's so much more bendable than normal thick glass. Look at that, look how bendable. But eventually, even if you push on this glass hard enough, look at that, look how far before it breaks. It'll still break. So if you've ever seen an optical fiber cable before, you'll notice that you can actually bend it a lot. It's weird to think that there's actually glass fibers in there because of how brittle we think of glass is. But the optical fibers can bend so much because it's a very pure glass that has very little impurities in it, and also because it has a very small diameter of the fibers. Now in this case, the reason we were able to bend our rock so much is because we had a very thin slice. But what if we didn't have a thin slice? Can very thick rocks still bend? Well, it depends on what time scale you're talking about. So let's say I wanted to bend this rock. If you apply a force long enough, almost any material will become malleable. So if you apply a force for long enough on geological timescales, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years, 
the rock will just bend and morph to whatever shape you're pushing on it with. And you can see many examples of this in nature. You can see how flexible rock really is on geological timescales. In fact, on geological timescales, rock kind of just flows like a liquid. Because the time length is so long, all the molecules and all the atoms within the rock have enough time to slide past each other and form new bonds as opposed to breaking. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. If you have any comments or questions about this video, be sure to let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And if you haven't subscribed to the Action Lab yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and you can hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out and head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked it out yet. At that site, you can check out the Action Lab subscription box. Now this is a subscription box where I've teamed up with the creators of the Curiosity Box from Vsauce. And what we've done is we've created an experiment box where you can do experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel. And thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you next time.